welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Now today I am with the Academy of Scrapbooking and Arts and I have a fun tutorial. Now this month's theme is rainbows. So I've taken that to mean rainbow colors because that's what I'm kind of feeling today. And I recently saw a video by Vicky Bootin and I decided that I'm gonna adapt her technique from her scrapbook page into a card background. So that's what I'm inspired to do today. So it's a little bit of an experiment, but I thought we could experiment together. And I'm using a new Gina K set, which is called Wonderful World. And you may have recently seen my Gina K haul from her new release. You can check that top right hand corner if you want to see the amazing things that I purchased from her new release. She's also sharing some exclusive savings with Hedgehog Hollow viewers. And you can and check those out in the video description below. So what are we going to create? We're going to be using the new Vicky Bootin colors here. So this is her acrylic paints and it's called Prime, I think. Colourpop. Colourpop. So it's really fun colors. We've got a bright pink, a light pink, a lime and kind of a teal. Now I think it was called Color Nugget was the video that I saw. If I can find a link, I'll pop it in the blog post for you because there's always a blog post that goes with the Academy um, uh, videos. That's what the words I'm trying to get to. Also trying to open the packaging because these are new to me. Again, something I purchased because I saw her video and I was inspired to have a go at this. They come in these really cute little pots too. I mean, so cute. So I'm gonna just open these up. And they also have some really fun names. So let's talk about the packaging. They're called Sugared Strawberry, Coral Macaroon, Juicy Pear, and Blue Hawaiian. Now, she just said, squeeze a little bit of paint out. Oh, it looks like they've got some tops on them so I'm just going to peel those off now a little bit of paint was what she said so I'm going to use the bits off the tops here and I'm going to take my tweezers and just pop my tops onto my palette area okay this is going badly but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that paint to start with because her rule was you can always add more but you can't take away and she created this really fun kind of um, paint dragging technique on a scrapbook page. Now it was on the scrapbook.com channel. So if I can, I'll link that in that top right hand corner for you. Uh, so you may see that pop in and you can go and watch her technique. But it was for a full scrapbook page. Now I don't really make scrapbook pages. So I thought, well, I wonder if I can adapt this to a card background. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm using my Nuvo paint brushes here. So that's what I have. And I'm using the wide ones. And I'm gonna start with, well, bright pink, obviously, because that's my kind of color. Now, it's a dry brush technique, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint. Now, she dragged her paint downwards, but I think I'm gonna go across, just because of how I'm envisioning this card. But you can see here, it's kind of starting to look like hers already. So she just kind of dragged a bit of paint across. And then she went with another color. And I'm gonna go from wide to thin as I go down. And I want to end on light pink because of where I want to stamp over it with black ink. So I'm gonna do this one slightly narrower with that kind of turquoisey teal color. So really I just want to create my own background here. And then I'm gonna go narrow still with the lime. Just a little bit of paint. That seems to be the key because what I really want to do is drag and I'm working on that Nouveau watercolour paper and I'm just trying to pick out the texture because that Nouveau watercolour paper has a really beautiful texture to it. And so I'm loving this rainbow of colour. Ah. Now the one thing she did say was it was important to have a dry brush. So what I decided to do was just take a different brush each time rather than wash them and have to dry them. You could, of course, do that. And I think that's what she was doing on scrapbook.com. She was washing and drying her brush each time. And I am taking just a tiny bit of paint and adding more, just like this. I'm gonna add a little bit more lime, just in here. But isn't that fun, like a real kind of color pop in there? Um, I think I'm going to go now just back the other way just to even it up because I don't want it to have harsh edges. 
So again, just tiny bits of paint. Move the line. And actually this bit on the lid has been perfect. So I think these paints are going to last me forever, but I love the colours. Aren't they the coolest? We'll call this a modern rainbow. Like this, and then a bit of bright pink. Ah. So I'm kind of going from the middle out. out. So this is a way to create your own background papers and you may well have some acrylic paints at home. Um, if you don't this was a very inexpensive collection but really pretty and Vicky has tons of ideas of how to use them. And I'm working on my glass mat so it's going to be nice and easy to clear up. And so one thing you'll know about me is I'm not good at just kind of leaving roughness. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that, but I think that's a really nice background there. So it's just some fun paint stripes. I'm going to put my brushes to the side. In fact, I'm just going to put them inside of the box to wash in a second. I'm going to pop this just over there. It's going to dry really quickly because there's really not much paint on there. Then I've already pre-stamped out my um, world from my stamp set. So pre-stamped this here and my flower. And I stamped that with my Gina K Amalgam ink, which is a hybrid um, formula from Gina K. And it's great because I can use colored pencils, I can use um, Copics, I can use watercolors, and I can mix and match. Nothing's gonna react. Now, I did put quite a lot of ink in, so I'm just gonna quickly add a little heat set um, because I literally did it before we went to do this video. And I'm going to add some colour into this too. Just like this. And I really went into this. I knew I wanted to do that background. Other than that, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do for this card. Now, I don't want to paint it with the acrylics, but the acrylics are a little bit too opaque. I want something fairly translucent and I also don't want anything that's going to take away from this design. I want something quite subtle and pale. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to spritz this again. This is stamped on the Nouveau watercolor paper. So I'm just going to spritz this with water and you can see that amalgam is not going to run. It's not going to do anything. And I'm going to grab my Ulta New um, liquid watercolors. These are the watercolor brush markers. And I'm going to take something that's going to complement these nicely. Um, I'm just going to grab my handful here. I think, what colours have we got here? I've got ruby red, warm sunshine, emerald, lagoon. I'm looking for maybe this pink, possibly a purple, red, no. There's a purple. So I want something that's kind of complementary. I don't think there's a teal in here from memory. A lagoon possibly. So the other great thing about using my glass mat is I can test my colors out on my palette area. So I can just pop a little bit of color down. That's very blue. That's nice and pink. And this one's perfectly purple. So those colours actually look really pretty together. And all I'm going to do is, because this is nice and wet, actually it's a little bit dry, I want it to be nice and wet because I want it to be really subtle. I'm just going to pop some colour down. Just dibs and dabs. Because I want this to be a very kind of like watercolour wash effect. Like so. Again, all your links will be in the video description for you, as will any Gina K offers that we've got running. There's an offer running at Tonic on their supplies, so you can um, indulge in their store on some great offers. 
And then I'm going to spritz on top because that's going to mix those colours together. And these are real complementary colours too, so they're going to mix together beautifully. And it's just going to kind of add everything together. A bit more of that blue. And if you get too much of any one colour, water, kitchen towel. This one's getting low. There we go. Now I'm just going to take my Ranger Heat It Tool and I'm going to heat this to its dry. It's going to take me a little bit longer, so I'm going to speed that process up for you. What it's going to give me is a really pretty kind of pastel wash in the background. So I've dried it off and you can see here it came out really pretty. Now when I first dried it, it was a lot darker. I'm going to show you the reverse. This is how bright it came out. And I didn't want it this bright against that rainbow background. I just think it would clash. So what I did was spritz it with some water, mop up some of the colour with kitchen towel, and I ended up with this much more pastel colour. And I'm much happier with it. It looks much better against the background. If you want something brighter, then you can add more colour, less water. You can really play around with the effect that you want to get. But this is the kind of card that I'm going for. So I'm going to take my acrylic background, my um, atlas globe base and then we're going to pop our flowers on the top here. I'm going to pop them up against some foam. Now some of you asked me what do I do when my paper curls like this? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. First thing I would do is I would heat the reverse side. Sometimes that's going to even it out. Sometimes you can just kind of uncurl it with your fingers. This one's going to be fine because when I apply foam and adhesive it's going to straighten it out. If it's super curly the other thing you can do is just pop it through your die cutting machine, no dies, just run it through with your regular plate and that will smooth it out. You'll find that's fine. But quite often if you've got a good adhesive, you're going to find that that works absolutely fine for you. So that's kind of the direction that we are heading towards. So I'm going to assemble this um, a little bit more. I'm just going to kind of lay things out a little bit. I'm also going to decide what sentiment I want to go with. Um, I think I'm going to go with a world of thanks. I'm always in need of thank you cards. Send lots of those out. So let's just decide how we want to do our sentiment. We can decide how our flowers are going to go on. This is really how I design a card. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to use this technique. I'm going to use this um, sentiment. I think I'm probably going to end up putting it through the middle. So I'm going to stamp it on a separate piece of cardstock. So I have my Misty have a piece of my Craft Perfect, this is the Ultra Smooth White, and I don't have my sticky sheet in here, it's just my regular Misty. Um, how am I going to do this? I think I need to add some bling, I'm feeling it needs some gold. Greg, can I have my clear mark pad, my um, pouncy thing, and my gold embossing powder out that top? second draw down. Thank you dear. So it's perfect because now he stamps, he knows exactly what I'm looking for. My tonic clear mark pad that you put away just now. That's it. Thank you. And yep, the thing that you've got in your whiskey. If you want to know what that is, you can again check the top right hand corner. And the tonic gold in the little Tupperware pot. One of them says over to the right in the Tupperware pots. But yeah, yeah. One of them says gold or copper, whichever one you come you to first. That sounds good to me. And it would help if I didn't ink my stamp with black ink. So we're just going to ink this with our clear mark pad. Like this. And we'll stamp it out. And if there's a little bit of black in it, it doesn't matter because we've got the glue ink in there. Then I'm going to add, this is the Nouveau Fine Embossing Powder. You can see I've been tillied because I have an extra spoon in here and she was in my little spoon bag the other day. So this is kind of how my card making process evolves.
So when I'm working with embossing powders, I like to, uh, sentiments rather, I like to use a fine embossing powder. If you want to know the difference between like a fine, an ultra thick, a regular embossing powder, we did a tonic live on it. Again, you can find that link in the top right hand corner to um, what the difference between those embossing powders are. In that same video, we talked about some different ways to use embossing powder. There's some really fun tips in there. I think you've, um, it's a really useful video um, in there too. So I'm just trimming this down to a thin-ish kind of size because I don't want it to overpower the rest of my card. There we go. I'm not sure how wide I want it yet, so I'm going to just leave it like that. Now we're going to start adhering our card together. I'm going to move my glass mat out of the way just because it's covered in acrylic paint. Kind of the advantage of having a big work surface behind me. So I've got my card base pre-cut and I have my score buddy here ready to go. Now if I have any of those top right hand corner options left, I'll link up all about the score buddy because lots of you asked me why I chose the score buddy. And again, I did a video why I chose the score buddy. So you, you can check that out in the top right hand corner too. I'm gonna smooth out here my Teflon bone folder. I have a piece of the tonic black velvet here, which I've cut down to four inches by five and a quarter. Now I'm going to add that nice textured piece that we made, that beautiful rainbow background using the acrylic paint. I'm going to keep my, hmm, what do you think Greg, light pink at the top or bottom? Uh, light pink at the top. At the top, because we're not going to stamp on it now. We're going to stick that down. So that's our card base. And I always map with my card base open. Now I'm going to mount this up with some foam squares. And I'm using these Gina K foam squares um, because they come with this little handy dandy dispenser. Just need to set my dispenser up here. Just open this up. You just pull this little tab out the end here. And just keep pulling and then it comes out here you tuck your end over like this and then you have a little dispenser and they just pop out can you see that right just kind of like pop out so they're just ready to go which i think is really neat like this and if i use my tim holt scissors these are non-stick scissors so i can cut foam and things nothing's going to stick to them which i just think is awesome they do stick to me of course because i'm not non-stick i wish i could come with a teflon coating sometimes and i'm just going to cut a couple up and i do like the reason i go for these um, kind of smaller squares sometimes is because when you have like a thin area like this it's sometimes easier to cut up a small square than a piece of tape into these really thin pieces because I can just cut off a sliver. You can see, I'm not sticking to the scissors, they're just sticking to me. And they are super sticky too. And then I just use my favourite tweezers. Again, I'll link these tweezers up. It's called a Swiss tweezer. And these ones I love in particular because of that kind of oil stain look to them. I think they're really pretty. Um, girly and practical. I mean, that's the dream. Pretty and practical. 
Ah, oh, so sticky. I'm sticking to everything. See, I know when my nails get in the way, they are too long and I need, need to be cut. There we go. So I'm going to stick this in the centre. Just like so. And then I'm going to stick this piece on. I just want to make sure I have my orientation exactly how I want it first. And you can replace this. There is a globe in there too, so you have that option with um, your stamp as well. And this is great because I can kind of pull the tag and have a couple pop out and I'm ready to go. And all fingers and thumbs. That's why I love the point on these Swiss tweezers. But if you would like some pretty and practical tweezers too, we'll make sure they're linked up for you. So all the links you'll always find in our video description are always in the same order as I go through the tools in the video. So they're easy to find. And now we're going to add our world of thanks. And I'm going to just choose my length. I think I'm going to you trim a little bit off of this. Again, you just pull a few pop out and you're ready to stick them on. The foam's great because it just adds a little bit of dimension, but not too much bulk for mailing or any of those things. And you've got that little bit of sheet there if you need to stick any back on if you've got too many. One, two, So I'm just going to take this, pop it across the middle. Okay, that's beautiful. So we're going to just do that. So that is my rainbow card. And I just absolutely adore that background. I mean, as I said in my Gina K. Hall video, this was one of those stamps that I just needed to have. It was my kind of, you know, when you look at a collection and you find something that you need, this was that need stamp. And I'm so pleased how this card came out. It really was how I imagine. And I hope you enjoyed following along on the process too. I mean, you could make so many different backgrounds using this technique and so many different options with this stamp set too. So don't forget to check out all of those exclusive coupons in the video description. Lots of savings there for you. And you can sign up to our Friday email at thehedgehoghollow.com where we send out coupons and savings, exclusive discounts, lots of fun things going on here at The Hollow too. Just one email on a Friday afternoon so you can sign up to that there on the website. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have new tips, tricks, two minute tips, uh, techniques and videos every single day here for you on the channel too. And also ring the bell so you get notifications of our videos that come out every single day as well. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's tutorial and go to thehedgehoghollow.com slash shop because we have opened up our subscription kit waiting list and the polka dot box is back so you can check that out too. I'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping everyone. Bye.